Hi, everybody. It's Diane, the Creative Inkster, and welcome to my stamp room. Today is Tuesday, June 28th, and this is a pre-recorded Technique Tuesday. Let's get started. So tonight I'm teaching another class, uh, um, Avid Stampers class, and so I wanted to have something ready for you. And this is the card that was the inspiration for tonight's Technique Tuesday. It's actually my birthday card that I made for my son, Alec, for his birthday last year. And I used it to make this card last week for work. We were doing uh, some kind of creative activity that you're inspired by through the pride bags that we received at work. And the colors just had me thinking of this and I, I just wanted to make this card. So I'm going to share the whole idea with you tonight. As you can see, we have a whole array of what I guess you'd call the rainbow colors. And this is the supplies that you need. Here is a basic card base that's uh, eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter and folded in the middle. And I'll just grab my bone folder and give it a little crisp fold. Then I'm going to grab some glue and put a piece that's four by five and a quarter on the inside. That gives me something to write on. And I've learned that my best bet is to do this as I'm making the cards, because if I try to do this afterwards, then I have a whole bunch of card inserts to prepare. So now I'm ahead of the game. Then you're also going to need a piece of black. I like black on this. It makes it pop whatever your card base color is. This happens to be Pacific Point, a color I don't use a lot, so it's perfect for this card tonight. And then my white that I'm going to do the stamping and uh, use the, the sponge daubers on is three and three quarters by five. So let's move these guys out the way. I'm going to pull in my scrap paper so I don't mess up my nice paper down here because this can get a little bit messy. So first off, I'm starting with Poppy Parade. I've used pink in this layout as well. And I'm going to take my sponge dauber. I actually have sponge daubers for all of our colors and I keep them in this box. Everyone always asks, where did you get the box? This is from the dollar store. It was, I think it was a little more than $2. I think it might've been four, but it holds a lot. And I just, I just print labels. And those labels have the names of the colors as well as the label goes around the sponge dauber. All right, so I'm gonna ink this up a little bit. I don't want it to go on too full strength because look at how dark that is. So I'm gonna just color off a little bit so that I know I get a little bit lighter color, but I get some color. And I'm starting in the left and I'm just gonna do in a circular motion, but moving to a little bit of a an oval shape, if you will. That's a little bit darker than I've done before. It's all gonna come together nicely, so it won't matter. Now I am in the habit of closing my ink pads after I use them. I am just not too um, safe on my table. I can get stuff everywhere. So the next color is a Mango Melody. Gonna do the same thing. So I'm just gonna use my scratch paper here till I get sort of the tone that I'm looking for. And you'll have to kind of play around with the sizing. And I've done it a couple of times before to uh, play around with the sizing and make sure I get enough for all the colors, but not too much of any one color. Eh, you know what? It's a handmade card. If it was perfect, it would say something like Hallmark on the back. Daffodil Delights, my next color. And I've used this sponge job for a really long time and they start to wear down a little bit. So it may be time for me to replace this guy. They don't last forever like anything else. And so this is a similar color, but being as it's yellow, it has just a little bit different shade than Mango Melody. You could also, if you don't have Mango Melody, you could use Pumpkin Pie, any other color of that sort of tone. Now I'm trying to fit four more across here. Granny Apple Green. You'll notice if you're if you're familiar rather with the Stampin' Up colors that I'm using the Brights collection mostly, or the Brights family of colors. So I'm gonna do this always in a circular motion, but for application, but more of an oval 
up and down. So I got a little bit more in one spot, so I can just press a little bit harder. That happens. The next color is going to be Bermuda Bay. This is just a beautiful green, teal green, blue, aqua sort of color. And it does make you think of being in a beautiful bay of water, maybe on an island. Not that we need that kind of weather where we live right now. Right now we've got some beautiful weather. It's beautiful and hot. There's Bermuda Bay. The next one is Gorgeous Grape. And as I mentioned, these are all in the same color family. So if you buy your ink pads in a full on color family, well, it's very easy to have what you need, but it doesn't have to be rainbow colors. You could do three or four colors. You could do some subtles or some really dark regal looking colors or even neutrals with this technique. This one went on the nicest. I like the flow of that one. And my last color is Pacific Point. So it's gonna go on the end. Now, if you find as you go through that you've got too much of one color on the end, you can always trim this down. And I might just do that. It's nice, I think, to actually add the color on the end. You get that really nice edging. Oh, what did I do? I must've touched something there. That sounds like an embellishment place. Um, so I'm going to probably add a little bit more. So I noticed some of my colors have gotten longer down here. Uh, the, the ovals. So I'm going to add a little bit more of daffodil there and a little bit more mango melody because I've still got some on my sponge dauber. Probably not going to show too much because I'm going to have a fair bit of, whoop, this one has a lot of color. In it. I have a fair bit of the black going on. I'll put my paper trimmer in. I'm going to trim off a little bit of this and I'm going to take it down from five to four and three quarters. Yes. There we go. Okay. And that means I need to take a little bit off here. So I'll take a little hair off there. And actually, if I'm smart, I'll take it off where I have my messy part, won't I? Just take, I don't want it to completely remove all the rainbow color. Let's bring this down to three and a half. It'll have a really nice large black border around it, thick border. I think that'll look really nice. Okay, so you could even start with a full panel piece and work from there. All right, the next thing I want to do is pick some stamps. I've got these two stamp sets in play. Wildlife Wonder is the one I'm using for the greeting, sending birthday wishes. And for the image, I'm using Dragonfly Garden and I'm using my Memento ink. This is going to be a birthday card for my friend, Kyle. Shh, don't anybody tell him. I don't think he watches the video, so I'm probably safe. But his birthday's coming up this, near the end of this week, by the, for the weekend. So I wanna I get this out to him for his birthday. So I like these dragonflies. It's gonna test to make sure I put enough ink on there. Yep, it's good and juicy. My Memento ink pad. So I'm going to pull this one down here and then I'm going to add ink and pop this one up. like this. There we go. And then I will grab the greeting I've put already on a block, sending birthday wishes. And I think up on the top would be the right spot for it. I'm going to do it in black. No, I'm not. I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to do it in uh, granny apple green. That might be too much in the center. What do you think? Maybe to match the card base, I'll do it in Pacific Point. I'm not sure if he likes blue as a color over other colors. That's what I'm going with. Sending birthday wishes. There we go. Oh, that looks smashing. All right, so 
here is my decorated panel. It's gonna go on here. So it's a nice thick black border on it and then onto the card. But now that I look at that, I wanna cut this border down a little bit too. So the beauty of starting with something bigger, right? You can always cut it down. So I'm gonna bring it down to three and three quarters by five. That's the size my white panel was to begin with. And here we go. And I do can put a little bit of embellishment on it if you want, but you don't have to. Up to you, keeping your recipient in mind, whether that would be something that would speak to them or not. Let's see. Oh, that is so bright and beautiful. I love this card. Remember, we've got our white on the inside already, so it's ready to be addressed and sent off. I'm not gonna pop it up. I'm just going to put it down in a single layer, but I am gonna add an embellishment. And I am either drawn to rhinestones or black dots. I think I'm going with the rhinestone basic jewels. They pop, they add some sparkle. These colors can be considered warm colors, but I think of them as cool because they're very, uh, oops, I got that a little crooked. They're very um, bright and bold. Okay, so let's grab the scissors, or actually take your pick tool and pick up some of these rhinestones. I'm just gonna sprinkle them around. I've said it before, I like to be careful when I'm sprinkling rhinestones around animals, that it's not looking like it's coming out of their behind. That just looks a little weird. So I'm trying to stay away from that as much as possible. Okay, so there's five. We usually use odd numbers. Odd numbers, like with flowers, do a nice job of embellishing. So there we go. That is how you make this rainbow card or any color scheme that you want to go with. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.